Today's video is sponsored by Motion Array. Hey everyone, Flo from Off to Lens here. I'm a French Australian filmmaker based in French Arts, and today I'm going to talk about the Mac Studio. In this video, I will share my experience using this computer for nearly three months, what I like or don't like about it, and whether or not I would recommend it for filmmakers like myself. Before I start, be sure to subscribe to see more videos like this one, and let's get into it. So I don't usually do tech reviews, but I've had a lot of questions about it, and you guys seem interested in my tech on it. Since I am a freelance filmmaker, the studio has become my main workstation. So in this video, I will focus on real world use and actually working with this machine on my actual projects, which are mainly documentary and travel content. This is not an in-depth technical review, as there are plenty out there, but I will share some rendering and transcoding times and also compare the studio to my 16-inch MacBook Pro. Before I start, here's the model that I got. So I decided to get the base model um, and the only thing that I changed was bumping up the SSD from 500 to 1 tera. It features a 10 core CPU, a 24 core GPU and has 32 gigs of unified memory. So it's quite powerful for a base model. When it first arrived, the thing that surprised me the most was the packaging or the box that it came in. I don't think I've seen anything like it for any other product. Uh, and I'd be curious to actually know how much of the price of the studio is allocated to that box. The computer itself is quite beautiful, it feels amazing, it looks clean and simple, and is also lighter than expected. So now I want to share the reasons why I decided to get the studio in the first place. Reason number one is power. For about two years now, I've been using my 16-inch MacBook Pro as my main computer, and I've really enjoyed it. And even though my MacBook Pro is quite powerful and spec'd up, since I'm working with 6K RAW files and even 12K files sometimes, I realized that I was spending way too much time rendering and transcoding. When I shoot a documentary or for licensing content, I usually end up with hundreds of files in just a few days. When Apple announced the M1 chip, I knew that I would eventually get one, but I was waiting for a more powerful one to justify the purchase. Since then, a lot of my photographer and filmmaker friends have decided to get the M1 Max for their MacBook Pros and have been really happy. I didn't want to buy another laptop though, and since the price for performance is quite high, so when Apple announced a new studio, I knew that it would be perfect for me. Reason number two is I wanted to have two computers. I have always owned MacBook Pros since I travel a lot for work and in general, but I actually spend most of my editing time at home. When I travel, even for work, what I mostly do is check emails and transfer files. So now I can actually have a travel laptop that is powerful enough to edit on the go if I needed to, but if something was to happen to it during one of my trips, then I wouldn't lose my main computer. Um, it actually takes a lot of the pressure off for me not having to carry around my main computer. And if I really needed to for some reason, I can actually take the studio traveling with me since it's not actually that big and it's quite light and actually fits in my backpack. Reason three is that I already use my MacBook as a desktop computer. So I've been wanting to invest in a proper desktop workstation since we moved to France, but the iMacs or the Mac minis were either too old or not powerful enough. And like I said before, I didn't want to own two laptops. Since I had been using my MacBook as a desktop setup, I already owned a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse. So essentially for me, all I had to do was get the computer unit, which wasn't really a crazy investment. So it made a lot of sense for me. I will make sure to link my whole setup in the description. So now let's talk about the things that I like about the Mac Studio. So first of all, it is powerful. So I knew that the M1 chips were impressive, but I actually never used one. And the first one that I used was the one in the studio, which is the M1 Max and one of the most powerful one you can get. So now let's talk about what it's like to actually be working with this machine. So this video isn't too long. What I'm gonna do is concentrate on playback and editing, then exporting as well as transcoding, which are the things that I do mostly. I will also show you some few tests in comparison with my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Before I get into it, these are both the specs for the MacBook and the studio side by side. Playback. In DaVinci, playing back 6K files is not a problem at all, and even 12K files seems to be fine and show them as playing back at 24 FPS. Editing. Editing in Final Cut Pro is very fluid, uh, applying effects is very fast, 4K Pro is, is super easy, and even in better quality mode, and even with Film Convert applied to all the clips, as well as stabilization, color correction, summary cropping, etc. When applying the effects that I've just mentioned on a five second clip, it takes just a second or two. 
Exporting. Here's an example of exporting my Paris travel video for YouTube. This is a 4 minute 4K timeline after rendering. And it took 1 minute 53 with a studio and 2 minute 56 with a MacBook Pro. But the most impressive part is transcoding files in DaVinci. As you know, I still prefer to use Gen 4 as opposed to Gen 5 even on my 6K Pro. So what I normally do is shoot everything in 6K B-RAW, import the files in DaVinci, and then transcode them to 4K ProRes 422 so I can edit directly in Final Cut as well as use them for licensing. When I transcoded one of the day's clips for my trip to Biarritz, it took 23 minutes with my MacBook Pro. I decided to do it again for the purpose of this video as a test with the studio, and it only took 6 minutes 19 whilst I was also screen recording. So it was nearly four times faster. This means that essentially I could render four days worth of clips in just over 20 minutes instead of having to wait an hour and a half. The first job I actually transcoded and edited fully on a studio was the Make It test footage. And again, it was crazy fast to transcode. 18 minutes on a MacBook Pro, down to five minutes on a studio for 98 clips. And keep in mind that the MacBook Pro that I have is actually quite powerful um, and can handle 6K files and also happened to edit my 12K video from the Ursa on an 8K timeline with it. It's just that the M1 Max is insane. Overall, as you can see, this saves me a lot of time per week time that can of course be allocated elsewhere. I know that some YouTubers love to say that you need the best and you need to get the Max Studio Ultra if you're a filmmaker, you don't. I happen to be working with 6K files on a daily basis and even 12K files and the M1 Max is absolutely fine. And if you're interested, here are some numbers from the SSD and raw speed test. Next, ports are great. If you're a filmmaker like me, you probably use various ports to transfer files, to import data or to use just accessories. And coming from a MacBook, this feels so much better. There are two USB-C ports at the front that I use for my SSDs to edit from. You also have an SD slot, which is very welcome since I use my EOS R a lot. And at the back, you have four Thunderbolt ports that I use for my LG Ultrafine display, as well as my GTEC desktop hard drives. You also have two USB-A at the back that I use for my CFast card readers, for example, as well as a HDMI port, Ethernet, and a 3.5 headphone jack. Not having to use dongles anymore is great, and the Mac Studio actually fits nicely on my desk and doesn't take too much room. Another thing that I really like about the studio is that it is super quiet and doesn't heat up no matter how much you throw at it. Right now we're experiencing a heat wave in France uh, with temperatures reaching 37 degrees every day. It's been like this for a week, so this is really welcome. Um, even after a full 10 hour day, doesn't heat up at all. To give you a comparison, my MacBook Pro starts heating up like crazy and making a lot of noise just after 20 minutes of web browsing. And lastly, it is great value. Apple is known for having very expensive products. I've been using MacBooks and iMacs for 12 years now, so I'm used to pay a high price and for me it's worth it. The studio though, in my opinion, is the first Apple Pro computer that is actually reasonably priced for the amount of power that you get. To give you an idea, the MacBook Pro that I have at the time of purchase cost me 5200 Australian dollars. The studio that I have now is $3,400 and is three to four times more powerful. I bought it here in France and the prices are much higher than Australia or the US, but the gap and the difference is still the same. MacBooks are always more expensive, of course, because you happen to have a screen, a keyboard, and they're much smaller but still. The configuration that I have in my studio costs $4,900 in the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. And now a quick word about today's sponsor, Motion Array. Motion Array is an all-in-one platform for creators where you can find pretty much everything you need to create videos. From video templates to presets, motion graphics, royalty-free music and sound effects. Otherwise, I wouldn't tell you guys to use something if I didn't use it myself first. So I've been using Motion Array since last year and pretty much all the titles that you've seen in my recent videos have been done using Motion Array. I don't really have the skills all the time to create animated titles or graphics or templates. So for someone like me, this is great. In addition to titles for my video sections and chapters, I also use callouts or graphs for specs or info on specific items, which works really well for videos like this one. It really gives something extra for the viewer and makes the whole experience more engaging and interactive. Everything is sorted by categories such as templates, presets, or by software with Final Cut, After Effects, Premiere Pro, or even DaVinci. And it's also super easy to use and nicely laid out. You have the choice of a monthly subscription for $29.99, an annual membership for $249.99. I have already made a dedicated video if you need more info, and feel free to use the link in the description if you want to check out Motion Array. 
So now let's talk about the things that I don't really like about this computer. Um, to be honest with you, there's actually not much that I don't like and it's mostly glitches. For example, when I first got it and I was transferring files, Finder wouldn't tell me the remaining time. Another thing is when I press the spacebar on a JPEG or a video, it wouldn't actually preview it or play it, it would just show me the icon. And this also happened last week, I think. Another thing is that when I was editing in Final Cut, if I wanted to stabilize a clip, normally I just click stabilization. With this one, it would actually reverse it after a second, it would just disappear. And sometimes with hard drives, it doesn't really matter if it's an SSD or a standard one, it wouldn't actually show or it would take a very long time. Uh, if I restart the computer, then it works again. So these problems are definitely not important and I'm sure they will actually disappear with further updates as it is mostly software related. One last thing about the actual computer body is that I almost find it too light. When you plug in a hard drive, especially at the front, you have to actually hold down the unit. I know that the ultra version of this computer is heavier and I would probably prefer that weight. Yes, I would absolutely recommend the Mac Studio. Since 2010, I've owned five MacBook Pros, two iMacs, and this is definitely the best computer that I've owned. Not because it's the most powerful and the newest, but because it's the one that suits my needs the best right now, and also the one that offers the best price for performance. That being said, if I had to pick one computer only, it'd have to be a MacBook Pro since I travel too much for work. But for me, having the Studio at home and the MacBook Pro for travels is a perfect combo. In the near future though, I will probably replace my 16 inch MacBook Pro with a smaller, lighter version that I can use purely as an admin and travel computer. Most likely it will be the new M2. That's it for me for today guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed my review of the Mac Studio. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments what is your current editing setup. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Also feel free to check out my new ebook, Freelance Documentary Filmmaking and Introduction where you can find a streamlined but comprehensive overview from pre-production all the way to marketing, built on years of my own experience shooting short documentaries around the world.